good morning and welcome to today's broadcast from our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. Today is the fourth Sunday after Easter. The radio broadcast is given in honor of Lois Vian's birthday from Devon Vian and family. The flowers on the altar are in memory of Nancy Tossenson from Brandon, Katie, Adlin, Greta, and Eli Ramo. Welcome. Good morning again. Looks like we're having just a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, again, this is the fourth Sunday after Easter, welcoming everybody to our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. Uh, the radio broadcast is given in honor of Lois Vian's birthday from Devon Vian and family. And the flowers on the altar are in memory of Nancy Tostenson from Brandon, Katie, Adeline, Greta, and Eli Ramo. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're glad that you've joined us. Uh, we're having a little technical difficulty with our Facebook Live for the minute, so we're trying to work out a couple of details with that. But um, I believe we're going to begin the service, and hopefully we'll pick that piece up um, as we go. So um, we begin with our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning. Great God of awakenings, we join you in joy this morning to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. May your love inspire us during this sacred time as we experience resurrection anew. Fill us with thanksgiving at the gift of new life. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll sing our opening hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me, number 798 in the hymnal. <clears throat> Good morning and welcome. We're sorry we had a little technical difficulty for those of you listening by Facebook Live, uh, but I think we've got those uh, corrections uh, uh, done. 
so that you can hear us uh, as we worship this morning. Just a couple of announcements. Again, we're glad that you've joined us uh, either by Facebook or those of you who will listen through KDMA, uh, 1460 AM um, at 11 o'clock, or those of you who will even find us on the local cable access on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays here in the Montevideo area. So uh, we are glad that you have joined us uh, for this time of worship. We hope that you are safe. Uh, we will continue to do worship um, as we have been for the next few weeks for sure. Uh, the governor's stay-at-home order has been extended to May 18th. So we'll continue to work in this method. Again, it's not my preference. It's not the way I would choose, uh, but it is simply the way that it is. And so um, we're thankful that you can join us in this way. We ask for your prayers for those who have asked for our support. We ask you to add to your list of people that you're praying for, uh, Mavis Odegaard and Blanche Loftness. Those are two of our members that we've asked you to add. Of course, we continue to pray for others, uh, members, and friends. There are many on that list. The list can be found at our website at OSLC, oslcmonte.com. And you can find a list of the current bulletin with those requesting our prayers. There are lots of people that could use your prayers as a lifeline to them as well. Under others to add to prayers, I'd ask you to add my father, Ralph McKee, to your prayers. He's hospitalized um, in Del Rapids, in my hometown, Del Rapids, South Dakota. So please pray for my dad in these uh, days ahead as well. Today is a special day. Uh, a happy birthday to Lois Veen, who I know will listen, will, is listening by the radio. Uh, the radio broadcast this day is in her honor uh, from Devon and from the family. And so happy birthday, Lois, to you, uh, and um, we just hope that you have a great and wonderful birthday, and uh, thanks for sharing that with us as well. Flowers on the altar. We have beautiful flowers this morning on our altar. They're in memory of Nancy Tostenson from Brandon and Katie Ramo and their children. And so, again, it's just another way that it helps um, with, uh, make this space more beautiful this day. We ask you to extend your hands of comfort to Paul and Rosie Daly on the death of their brother-in-law, Bob Rovang, who died this past week. Um, the funeral arrangements um, are pending. Finally, I just want to say a word. Thanks for all you do for our saviors. If you know of somebody who needs help with food or other kind of expenses who's struggling at this time, please let me know. I will try to connect them with people who can help them. Um, if you need food, the local food shelf will help you. And again, if you can't get a hold of someone there, please let me know. I can talk to people and make sure that you can get food. You can also call the local sheriff's office. Um, they have boxes of food waiting for people who need them. The food shelf is trying to work in partnership with our local sheriff's department so that people can get the food that they need. If you can support us financially, we'd appreciate that as well. We know that times are tough for many, so we only ask for a gift from those of you who can help us. Uh, if you're unable, we get that as well. So it's just, a, again, a reminder. Um, support can be done through our website using the Tithely app, or you can simply send something here to check. There is also daily devotions online from Augsburg Fortress. Uh, Christ in Our Home, you can get it each day as, a, as an email if you're interested in that. Again, let me know. I'd be happy to send you the link to that. They're doing it at least through the end of May and maybe now through June. So, um, Two last things, just so you know. Uh, we are going to send out a survey to our members about what they think, what all of you think, as we think about reopening. Your input would be greatly welcomed and appreciated and would help our church council as we go forward. You should get it later this week, and hopefully you'll return it to us so that we can have some input from our members about how do we go forward after this May 18th. Um, next Sunday, we're doing something really fun and special. Um, we uh, are working with Valentino's, a restaurant here locally here in Montevideo, and we will have for pickup from 8.15 till 9 or until they're gone, we're going to have fresh caramel rolls for, to celebrate Mother's Day. So stop by, pick up a roll or two, and then you can go home and you can worship with us on Facebook Live at 9 or at 11 o'clock at KDMA. So next Sunday, 
We'll have rolls available. Again, Valentinos are going to uh, bake them and put them in containers. So um, coming from one of our local restaurants is a way to support our restaurant. And uh, funds for this come from our endowment fund uh, to help our members. So it's just a way that we can celebrate our moms and work with that. I believe that's all the announcements. There are others, I'm sure. There are some on our website. And you can always go to our website and check it out there as well. We continue this morning with our brief order of confession. Let us confess. Christ Jesus, you taught your followers to form community and to share all that they had with those in need. In such a way, you provided for everyone. We have assurance that you walk with us during times of trouble. You provide all good things. Yet we often hoard what we have for fear that we will not have plenty. Our cups overflow in so many ways. Goodness and mercy have followed us. Yet we often hoard our own mercy towards others. Teach us to share in common those gifts that you have given us, material, emotional, and spiritual. Forgive us when we lose sight of the call to bring all people into the place of plenty and thanksgiving. May the scriptures and our prayers transform our hearts every day so that we keep the vision of your call within us. Amen. Amen. Now hear the words of absolution. Loving God, we are assured of your bountiful forgiveness, and we humbly thank you as you lead us on the right paths. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with our hymn of praise. Lord, speak to us that we may speak number 676. Hymn number 676, verses 1, 2, and 4. Let's Hymn number 676, verses 1, 2, and 4. Lord, speak to us that we may speak in living echoes of your tone. As you have sought so Continue with our prayer of the day. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues this day with our first lesson. This lesson for the fourth Sunday of Easter comes from Acts, the second chapter, verses 42 through 47. The introduction says this about the text. Today's reading is a description of life in the community following Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit was poured out on God's people. This new community is sustained in worship and fellowship they share what they have and ensures that everyone has enough. Here is the text from Acts, the second chapter. Now the baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had things in common. 
They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends our first lesson. We'll now have our special music, He Leadeth Me. Second reading for this day comes from 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 19 through 25. The introduction says this. Doing the right things does not guarantee that one will not experience difficulties, hardships, rejections, or even suffering. Here Christ is presented as a model for our path of endurance and loyalty to God, particularly amid adversity. Here's the text. From 1 Peter, the second chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain and suffer, suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you leaving you as an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness by his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and to the guardian of your souls. Here ends our second lesson for this day. We continue with our gospel acclamation. Alleluia. We look to your word, O God, to lead us and guide us. Alleluia. 
The Holy Gospel for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, comes from John, the 10th chapter, the first 10 verses. Here, Jesus uses a familiar image to the people of his day to make the point about spiritual leadership. Those who listen to Jesus are led to the abundant life. Here's the text from John 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. Now when he has brought all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill. I came that, may ha that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll continue with our children's moment. Well, good morning on this, the Good Shepherd Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday, as we just heard in our gospel reading, is all about Jesus being the gate. Jesus being the gate to our faith and leading us and walking with us. And so, I brought with me a gate. And I'm going to do a little bit of what they call an optical illusion with this gate. And so this gate here represents... Um, the gates that would be on the sheepfold. And so Jesus is talking about nobody can go in it without Jesus. And so let me show you. It's a little big to go around, and I can't go under it. And it's a little tall to go over it, and I can't go through it. But when Jesus comes into the picture, it changes things. When Jesus comes, the gate becomes a little bit different. And there is now a hole in this gate. And so with Jesus, peekaboo, we can go through the gate and Jesus will lead us and Jesus will guide us and Jesus will be our shepherd as we are his sheep. We will be guided and we will be led and Jesus will be with us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sheep. Thank you for all the other animals, and thank you for Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, our service continues with the sermon, and I still don't have any more candy, so here's a high five. Thank you, Quentin, for the children's sermon. Well, thanks, Quentin, for that great message and being reminded about the gate and Jesus being the gate to welcome us in. Let's start with a prayer. Lord God, we come to you knowing full well that you lead us and guide us. But when we have to walk through that dark valley, we're scared and terrified. Remind us daily that you have a hold of our hand and that you walk with us. And you'll protect us from all that will destroy us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I began to think about how many times we try to pull away and, and not take the Lord's hand and walk with him. And so I remember a time when my daughter was young and she was learning how to ride a bike. She had this brand new pink bike that we bought her with tassels on it and of course some training wheels. It was my job to guide her on her first run around the driveway. I tried my best to steady her, to keep her on the driveway, 
But it was kind of hard to keep the bike and steady her and all of that to keep her from tipping over. Then as soon as she figured out just a little bit, she said, Dad, let me do this alone. So I let go. She struggled at first. Soon she figured out that in her mind, she didn't really need Dad's help at all. Today's text is about the Great Shepherd, the one who leads and guides and protects us. And I think we all need that reminder. I know that I do every day. One author says this about the text. The hired hand's callous disregard for the sheep is based on two facts. He doesn't own the sheep, nor does he care for the sheep. With no financial or emotional investment in these animals, hired hands have little incentive to stand by the helpless sheep when serious danger threatens. So I think the first thing we learn from this text, what Jesus was trying to teach us, is that our great shepherd has invested heavily in us. God has put everything on the line for us, is willing to do whatever God can do to protect us. Again, this author says, to be sure this language of shepherding which is a rich metaphor for a first century audience, the evangelist combines the teaching of the good shepherd with the imagery of the sheep gate. The gate protects the sheep both from the dangers of a robber coming into the fold and from the danger of the sheep escaping. So, a little bit about sheep. They're not very smart. And if there's a tiny little hole, they'll stick their head to try and get out. We used to raise sheep when I was a kid on the farm, and we would sometimes come home and find our sheep with our head, their heads stuck through the fence. They couldn't get out. And so we'd have to figure out how to get them back in. And you could open the gate, but if a stranger opened the gate, they wouldn't come out. They would just stand there. They would look at them and say, well, with that kind of, who are you kind of look on their face? But when one of us would come, and they knew our voices, and each of us kids, we had a couple of lambs that we would bottle feed. So all I'd have to do is start talking, and the two sheep that knew my voice, they would come running up. And if we wanted them to get outside the gate, then they could walk outside and they'd stand right by me. Just to, so they could have their bottle, but because they knew that voice. God has invested heavily in us by sending us a great shepherd to lead us, to guide us, to walk with us. And sometimes I think we forget that. The second thing is that the great shepherd is the gate that will protect us from the evil that will devour us. Again, sheep be, have become so docile over the years that they really have no protect, protection mechanism. So, when that danger comes, they don't know what to do. They're not fast runners. They're not really smart. They just don't know what to do, and so many times they just stand there. And they don't know how to get away from the danger that's there. I think that's kind of like us as well. Over and over again, I think we cry out to God to help us and save us, and then do we take the time to listen for that peace and that calm that Jesus offers? You see, I think we all need the great shepherd at some time in our lives. And most often we need a great shepherd much more than we would admit it. In times like these, some of you are complacent. Some of you are scared. Some of you feel like everything is out of control. And I would probably fall in that third category. If you know me at all, I like things to, to process in an orderly process. And so when things are out of control, it makes me a little uneasy, maybe even a little anxious. I like to do the things the best way they can be done. I like to think outside the box, call God's people to greater faithfulness. But when things seem out of control and you don't really know where things are going, I have to admit, I struggle a little bit with that. And that's when we need the reminder about the great shepherd. Like many of you, I want something more normal back badly. And I think that's where many people are at. 
So the other day, I was feeling a little bit anxious. We were waiting for the governor's announcement if the stay at home was going to be extended or not. And so at our staff meeting, one of our staff meetings read this devotion. And it reminded me about the Great Shepherd. It's from a book called The Power of Being Thankful. It started, she started by reading Psalm 91, verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On him I will lean and rely in him confidently, and I will trust. The verse ended with an exclamation point. I have a copy of the devotion she read that way. An exclamation point to remind us that this is not what we have to do. It's not a suggestion. It's a statement of fact about what we can do and what God does for us. And here's the rest of the devotion, which I think is so fitting at this time. It goes like this. At various points in our lives... All of us feel like we're getting out of our depth or in over our heads. There are problems all around. A job is lost, someone dies, there's strife in the family, or a bad report comes from the doctor. Now, when these things happen, our temptation is to panic because we feel that we've lost control. And this is what caught me about the author when he wrote it. But think about it, he said. The truth is, We've never been in control when it comes to life's most crucial elements. The only thing that holds us up and the thing that we can be most grateful for is the grace of God, our Father. And that won't change. God is never out of depth and therefore we are safe when we are in life's deep end because we can trust that he will carry us in his arms. And the prayer that ended this devotion again, I thought was so fitting. Thank you, Father, that you are a refuge for me. I know that because you are with me, I'm safe and secure. Thank you that no matter how difficult life may seem, I can be at peace because you'll never let me go. Amen. So, the great shepherd is there to carry us to safety. And the evil that surrounds us will not destroy us. That is good news for all who struggle in every, any area of life. Third and finally, this great shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Not only is he the gate and the protector and the gatekeeper, but Jesus ultimately lays down his life for the sins of the world to keep each of us safe in God's arms. One final comment from the author who commented on this text. The shepherd's commitment to the sheep is total. He will lay down his life for them. In contrast, the thieves and bandits come only to kill and destroy the flock. The hired hand surely runs in the face of danger by abandoning them. But the shepherd's commitment to the sheep is total. And he will lay down his life for the sheep, even at the jaws of the wolf. So the great shepherd is there for us all the way and then even dies to save us. And that's part of what we celebrate in Easter is that Jesus died and rose again. The tomb is empty. Our Savior is alive to walk with us. There is such great comfort in that and such peace. We only have to live that and believe it every day and remind ourselves every day that in the midst of those dark valleys, we have to be reminded of that fact. And so maybe if you're in one of those places and you're anxious or something, maybe you could recite Psalm 91, verse 2. Maybe you could memorize that verse. it become your mantra, something like this. This is what I did after, um, on Tuesday after I heard this devotion. I started memorizing that verse. And so I shortened it a little bit because, so I could remember it well, but it went like this. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. In God, I will trust. In the midst of whatever you're in, that's a great mantra. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. 
I know that because of COVID-19, people are struggling. I hear it almost in everyone I talk to. We all want and maybe need something more normal. Some just struggle, struggle with de de depression, loneliness, isolation. Others try to control something that we cannot. Others are angry about the lost income or the lost jobs, and the list goes on and on. Maybe it's a family member they want to see who's in the hospital or at the nursing home that they're not allowed to see. We have a shepherd who comes with hope, a shepherd who offers to sit with us and give us peace. We simply have to stop, listen, and accept the peace that God offers. And if your mind, if you can't stop your mind from doing that, memorize Psalm 91, verse 2. Take that as your challenge for this week. Let that become your mantra in those moments when you just want to throw up your hands and say, Lord, what else can I do? I don't know what to do. God's trying to tell us we have a shepherd that will walk with us. No matter what you're dealing with at this moment, God is there. And even though it feels like you might be all alone, you are not. The great shepherd comes near because he knows that you and I struggle. He simply offers to sit with us and to give us the peace that we so desire. Today we celebrate the great shepherd, and we are thankful that the shepherd has heavily invested in us by giving his life for us. We're thankful that we can be spared from the evil that destroys us, and we are thankful that the great shepherd will lay down his life for each of us. What more do we need? We're much like a kid riding the bike with training wheels. We really think once we get the sense of how to balance a little bit on that bike that we really don't need any help. We can do this all by ourselves. And we forget. We forget to let God guide us and lead us and walk with us. So Psalm 91 might be a great place to end today. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On him I will lean and rely, and in him I will confidently trust. Thank you, God, for sending us the great shepherd to lead, to guide, and to die that we might have life now and forever with you. To God be the glory. Amen. We continue with the hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Hymn number 502, 502, verses 1 through 4. That's hymn number 502, verses 1 through 4. With thee, dear Lord. 
We continue our service with the confession of our faith from the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church in heaven and on earth, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue our service with our offertory song, We Give Thee But Thine Own. And that song number is 686 in your hymnal. The song is 686. We give thee but thy own. Our service continues with the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Loving God, you are always there for us, and yet many days we forget that, and we're racked with fear and panic, pain and suffering. When life seems so out of control, remind us that you walk with us, you touch us with your presence, and feed us with your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of all peace, we pray for all those who requested our prayers. You alone know what they struggle with, what they need help with, why they're on this list, and so be present with them. Bring healing, whatever type of healing they need, emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever it is, Lord. We pray for Dale and Diane and Marilyn and Marty, Dylan and Perry, John and Duane, Tina and Keeley, Gail and Olivia, Blanche and Mavis, as well as Dolores and Elda, Ralph and Kathy. We remember before you Kate and Ruth Ann, Lowell and Rick, Karen and Bill. Remember before you Jeremiah and Duane, Fern and Bill, Lucas, Dr. Bob, Aaron, Christopher, and Jody as well as others now that we name silently in our hearts. Bring healing to all that need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, of all miracles, we pray for an end to this virus. We pray for those hot spots where the virus is running rampant. We think of some of the meatpacking plants that have gone through lots, some of the big cities. Bring healing and relief to all those who work in these places, live in these places. Keep them safe as they do the work that is before them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh God of all support, we also pray for those who are struggling with food issues or how to pay the bills. Keep us mindful as neighbors on how to best help those in need. And keep us always looking for ways to help. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh God of all comfort, we pray for Paul and Rosie daily as they mourn the loss of their brother-in-law, Bob Rovang. Bless all who mourn with the knowledge of the empty tomb 
and the risen Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of peace, we also pray for families who struggle. I read reports lately of rising domestic violence. We pray for peace in all families, that all might be people of love and grace and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of all goodness, we know that your goodness never ends and that you protect us as the great shepherd. Be with us all this day and help us to be thankful for all that we have and all that we are. Fill our hearts with your love and your grace, your forgiveness, and help us to go forward strongly as people of great faith with your hand to lead us and guide us, with your arms around us to protect us, with your great strength to give us peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy alone, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue now with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our hymn, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. That hymn number is 789 in your hymnal. 789. receive the words of the benediction. Go forth and do Christ's work wherever you can. Spread God's love and grace wherever you can. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll sing our sending hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, number 883. Number 883, verses 1, 3, and 5. That's 883, verses 1, 3, and 5. Thank you. 
you for joining us on Facebook Live, those of you who will listen by the radio today, and those who will watch on local camp channel 180 here in Montevideo. We're just thankful that you've all joined us. May God's peace be with you, and may you walk with the great shepherd to lead you and guide you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. I'd like to say a special thanks to Susan Marcinkowski, our special singers, Barb and Larry Smith, Jerome Fraggett and Pam Bockle, the Ultra Guild under the direction of Janice Olson, our radio and video personnel, and Quentin for the Facebook live stream. If you'd like to sponsor one of our radio broadcasts, the cost is $95. Please contact the church office at 269-8824 for more information or to reserve a date. Thanks to all who support this important ministry of the church. Have a great week. Have a great week, everybody, and happy birthday, Mom. <laughs>